vehicles, vehicles, vehicles. Man, there's so many damn vehicles in this game. Like, I really feel for any new player that just loads up GTA in 2020 and looks at really any of the websites because how the hell are you meant to know which vehicle you should get? Let's be real, that short paragraph description under every vehicle is not going to do anything to help you out at all. So today I'm going to try and clear up some of that confusion and rank pretty much every vehicle that has some sort of armor in GTA Online. Just like we did when we ranked all of the businesses a couple of weeks ago. We're going to go over all of them, run through the pros and cons, when they're useful, when they're not, and where they rank. Pretty rapid fire to be honest, like flashcards. You've got an exam, okay? This, this is the homework, this is what this is. So if you find this video helpful, a thumbs up is always appreciated for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. And if you need any friends to play GTA Online with, if you're struggling to find people to play with, or you just want to talk about GTA, go over and join our Discord server. We've got over 1,000 members over there now, and we're building a nice little community. And for any of you guys that like TikTok and want some funny videos, rapid fire tips, that sort of stuff on a daily basis, go follow me over there. I'll leave a link for that below as well. And before we start with the first vehicle, if there's anything you disagree with in this video, like if I rank something wrong, and you, for whatever reason, love that vehicle, explain why in the comments below. That way, anyone that's thinking about getting that vehicle can read that and maybe you can add something that I miss. All right, so we'll start with one of the newest vehicles in the game, and that's the Zaba. Uh, this probably isn't the best one to start this list off with because this one's gonna go in D tier. At this point, I honestly think Rockstar just added this vehicle in for the meme because I can't really think of many situations where I'd actually want to use this thing. But let's talk about what it can do. It's actually amphibious, so it can go on land and it can go in the water as well, like a boat. Again, not really sure when that would be too useful, but hey, it's, it's there. <laughs> It can actually take a lot of rockets as well, around 14, 15-ish rockets with someone inside. The front windows are sort of bulletproof, they'll probably take about 15-ish bullets, about half a magazine. So it can take some damage, so why is it so low on the list? Well, it's really, really slow. It's also meant to be a really good off-road vehicle, and it's really not that great. And the last reason is the price. It's $2.4 million, so yeah, I think that sort of says enough. Let's talk about the Night Shark next. Uh, this one is a really good vehicle. I'm not sure if I should put it in S tier or A tier. I'm probably going to lean more towards S tier, so we'll put this one up here, but it's, it's pretty close. This vehicle always gets compared to the Insurgent for obvious reasons. They look pretty similar, but in my opinion, it's a bit better. The Night Shark can take around 5 RPGs or about 15 homing rockets before blowing up, which obviously means it's very well protected. It's also a lot faster than its competitors as well. It's actually pretty quick for any vehicle, let alone an SUV. As for bullet protection, it doesn't come with bulletproof windows, but you can add armored windows in your mobile operations center, which help block some bullets, not all. It also comes with a built-in machine gun on the front that the driver can control, which does mean you won't be able to use your own weapons. However, there is a workaround and you actually can use your own weapons as long as you don't equip the armored windows. So that's a trade-off you're going to have to choose between if you want to have armored windows or if you want to use your own weapons. It is a little bit expensive for what you're getting coming in at 1.25 million, but personally, I still think it's worth it. So I'm still going to put it up in S tier. Other than the relatively high price, there's no real downsides to this one. It's fast, it's well armored. It's just really good. Now let's talk about the Insurgents, and I'm gonna have to put the original Insurgent down in B tier, and I'm gonna put the Insurgent Pickup Custom in A tier. The base Insurgent is basically just a cheaper version of the Night Shark without the mounted gun on the front. It's a bit slower, it has a bit less protection, pretty much no protection on the windows at all. It starts off at $900,000 and $675,000 after you complete the Humane Labs raid and can get it for the trade price. So I guess for the price, it's pretty good, but in my opinion, it still doesn't really compare to the Night Shark. The Insurgent Pickup Custom, though, is a step up from the base one. 
The pickup custom has a mounted machine gun on the top, so if you have a friend that you can play with, that could be pretty useful, but they will be pretty exposed on the top. You can also add some extra protection for your gunner at the top, and you can add armor to the windows of the insurgent as well, which makes it a lot more protected and a lot more useful. To buy the insurgent pickup custom, you'll first need to buy the insurgent pickup for around 1.795 million, I think it is. And then you'll need to upgrade it to the custom variant in your mobile operations center or your Avenger. And that's going to cost an extra 200,000. So it is very expensive. So while it can be good, it can still be tough to recommend for a lot of players. And because of that, I can't put it up in S tier. So this is going to go in A tier. All right, the Barrage, I'm going to put this one in C tier. Again, it's even a bit slower than the Insurgent, which isn't really great. It also doesn't have windows, so obviously no bullet protection at all, which is a massive drawback. One upside for the Barrage though is that you can actually have two gunners, one at the front and one at the back. They're both mounted weapons and the back one can actually be switched for a grenade launcher as well, so I guess that's pretty fun. Overall, it is one of the more fun vehicles to use in the game if you have friends. It'll still take a lot of rockets, just like both the Insurgents and the Night Shark but the lack of bullet protection is just too big of a drawback for the Barrage, along with the big price tag of over 2 million. So yeah, this one's in C tier. The Menacer is gonna go in C tier as well. Just like all of the other armored trucks, it will still take a lot of rockets and it's gonna take about half a magazine of bullets before the glass breaks, just like the Zaba. And just like the Night Shark, it has a front-mounted MG for the driver, and it does have a second machine gun on the top that a gunner can use as well. So on paper, it sounds good, so why is it so low on the list? It is very slow compared to the other vehicles it's competing with. It's a bit slower than the Barrage, it's a lot slower than the Insurgents, and way slower than the Night Shark, it doesn't even come close. It also has a price tag of 1.75 million. Personally, for that price, I want a vehicle that's going to provide a lot more than what the Menacer does. If we were only talking about the functionality, it's probably a little bit better than the standard Insurgent overall, and I'd say it's probably in about B tier. But because of that price tag, I'm going to put it a tier below in C tier. I probably wouldn't recommend this one. Let's move away from the armored trucks and SUVs, and let's go into the actual armored cars. And we'll start with the Duke of Death. This one's going to go in S tier for me. I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but I really like this vehicle. No, it won't take as many rockets as the trucks. It'll only take a couple of rockets before it's going to blow up. And no, it doesn't have any weapons, but it's a car. You're going to be using it a lot differently to the way you're using the other ones. First of all, the Duke is actually free if you're a returning player to GTA Online and you link your Rockstar Social Club account. If not, it's $665,000, so still a lot cheaper than the trucks. That's partially what makes it so great, but it's also really fast for an armored vehicle. It's also almost completely bulletproof. It has really good protection from the front, it's invincible from the back, but you can get shot through the sides and some angles through the front. So overall, this is a fantastic car for things like VIP missions, missions in general, and even heists. So S tier, I really like this vehicle, it's great. The Karuma is also going to go in S tier for pretty much all of the same reasons as the Duke, and it's actually even a bit cheaper, coming in at 525,000. There are a few differences though, the Karuma can't take any rockets at all, one rocket and you're dead, but it's actually completely bulletproof, you literally cannot be shot out of this vehicle. As for speed, in a straight line it's pretty fast still, but it is a bit slower than the Duke, but the main difference driving wise is that the Duke is a muscle car and the Karuma's a sports car, so handling, turning, it's going to be a lot better. So this is another great cheap option, and for things like heists and missions where enemies don't use explosives, this is fantastic because you are literally invincible when you're inside. The Armored Paragon R is gonna go probably in C tier for me. This one's around $900,000, but you can actually get it for free if you host all of the casino story missions and complete them all in order. So you will need a penthouse if you want to get it for free, but it is a pretty good bonus overall. This is the fastest out of all of the armored cars, so if we're looking at it from a driving perspective, this is the best. As the driver, you'll also have the front machine guns built into the vehicle as well. 
But the main drawback on the Paragon is that the windows aren't completely bulletproof. A lot like the Zaba, again, they'll take around 15 bullets and then they'll break and you'll be completely exposed. So for that reason, it's a C tier vehicle for me. The Stromberg is gonna go in B tier. And in my opinion, this is actually one of the most underrated vehicles in the game. And one of the main reasons it's underrated is because it's actually really expensive and not many people decided to buy it. So people just don't even know about it. It's almost $3.2 million with a trade price of 2.4 million. So I'm just gonna say straight up, for most people, you should not buy this vehicle. But if you did buy it, it's actually pretty decent. It'll take a handful of rockets to blow up. So that's why it's on this list. And it's also amphibious as well. So you can take it underwater like a submarine. The main upside to the Stromberg though is the homing missiles. It comes with the oppressor style rockets on the front that actually track targets really, really well. So it's a pretty good offensive vehicle overall. Again, another downside though is that it doesn't have any bulletproof windows at all. So even though it can tank a few rockets, it's not very safe. So yeah, probably B tier. And if I'm being honest though, I can't think of really any situations where I would want to use this vehicle. It sort of just exists. And the last armored vehicle we're gonna go over is the Apocalypse ZR380. This one, functionality-wise, could probably be S tier, but there's one main drawback that drops it down to A tier for me, and that's the price. The ZR380 is $2.1 million with a trade price of 1.6 million, which of course makes it one of the most expensive vehicles on the list. And while it probably does live up to that price tag, it's still not an S tier vehicle for me because of how good the other cars are for a much cheaper price. So let's talk about what it can do. First of all, it's fast. Not quite as fast as the Paragon R, but a lot faster than the Karuma and the Duke of Death. It also has complete front and back protection on the windows. The side windows though, they aren't protected at all, but if you play your cards right, you can kind of avoid that a bit. You can also add dual machine guns on the front, and you can also add things like spinning blades on the sides, back, front. Like this thing, this thing can kill people, okay? We're just gonna say that. It was brought in with the Arena Wars update, so it's pretty much made to destroy people, I guess. Another massive drawback for this vehicle though, and another reason I couldn't put it up in S tier, is that it can't actually be used in heists like some of the other armored cars. So probably the main place you would actually want to use this vehicle, you can't even use it there. But for free roam, it's a lot of fun. It's still really good, so it's still going to go in A tier. So that's the final list, and like I said at the start, if you use one of these vehicles all the time, like if that is your main vehicle, there's a pretty good chance that you know more about that vehicle than the average player. So if there's anything I missed on one of your favorite vehicles and you think it should be higher or if you think another vehicle should be lower, comment that below, but make sure you explain why so I can see and other people can see as well. Because the whole point of this video is to help people out. You also probably noticed I didn't include tanks on this list and that's because they're sort of in a tier on their own and honestly they could be in their own video. So yeah man, that will bring us to the end of the video. If you found the video useful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. That's gonna help this video reach more people like you and help more people out. Follow me on TikTok, join the Discord server to find people to play with. But more important than any of that, make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.